All right, guys, welcome back. This is week nine of the final build on the Z. And just as promised, we are doing the rest of the painting today. We're getting another layer or a couple layers of color down on here. Um, and then we're gonna be doing clear coat and it is going to look absolutely great. I'm really happy with how it's coming out. I went ahead and did some more sanding this morning. Um, so everything is looking really, really good. Um, I went ahead and hit some of the trouble areas that I can't really see too much um, once everything is in, but I just know that I'm gonna want them to be as best as I can. Um, you can see I got the suspension on. Um, so this is just the engine cross member, the steering rack. I put the coilovers on. It doesn't have tension rods. Um, so you can actually move the control arm back and forth a little bit. Um, but just for moving it into the garage, it's not really too big of an issue. Um, but now what we're gonna go ahead and do is take the suspension off again, um, because I want to just be able to get, you know, like right here and right here really, really well without having, you know, like a bag over that. So we're just gonna go ahead and drop the suspension once again, nothing too crazy for that. Um, you know, it's just struts and then subframe um, and then the steering linkage as well. But it is looking really, really good. Um, it is about 50 degrees outside today, which is actually warmer than it's been. Um, but because of that, um, we're the car is actually cold. Um, if you think about it, it's been, you know, you can think of it as absorbing the coldness or losing all of its heat to the environment. Um, so I have a big radiator heater right there um, and then hopefully that's going to warm this up. Um, but I don't think it's going to get warm enough. So I'm going to go ahead and take my heat gun and just kind of go over the entire metal area all over the front here and just make it warm. I've got a temperature sensor that I can go ahead and see what the temperature of the metal is because we really, really want this to, uh, to be over 60 degrees Fahrenheit when we're painting. Um, that is just ideal environmental conditions. Um, it's going to help the paint lay down the best and uh, it's going to be really good. So we've got a couple things for that. Um, I've got a big box of paint over here. I've got some tack cloths because I went ahead and sanded this down. I actually washed it with some water, um, but there's still a lot of sanding residue, just like paint. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and hit it with some isopropyl alcohol and some of the blue like work rags. And then we're going to go ahead and hit it with a tack cloth. And once the tack cloth comes back clean, then we know we're good to go. So um, I've got a little bit of work to do to take the suspension off again. Um, we're going to get it up on jack stands so that's supporting it. I'm going to go ahead and tent off a little bit of this area over here just so we can get um, collect as much of this paint as possible. And then I actually have a little contraption to go ahead and filter out some of the paint as well. Um, I'll show you that in a little bit. Um, but overall guys, this is going to be really, really cool. I'm super excited and I know this is going to come out great. All right guys, we have made a lot of progress. Got the suspension out, it's up on blocks. Went ahead and put some uh, tape and plastic all over um, on the ground to protect everything. I wiped it down with the tack cloth um, and everything's looking pretty good. Um, there's a few spots that I might go ahead and sand again. It's kind of a 50-50. Um, I don't really want to introduce too much more dust into this. Um, but I think the only thing that I really need to do is uh, tape that back up the steering shaft um, so that I can go ahead and not paint that. Um, other than that, I think it's looking pretty good. I went ahead, I have another heater right there, kind of heating up the room. And then I have this fan. Um, so the idea behind this, if you can see, I taped a big old just like regular house filter to it. Um, the, the hope is that it kind of collects particulates um, and then just blows clean air back out. Uh, because we are in an enclosed environment, um, ideally you would want something, a setup like this, but venting to the outside. Um, I am going to be wearing a respirator, so it's not too big of an issue for me. Um, I'm just trying to keep down the amount of particulates in the air um, and hope it doesn't, you know, paint the rest of the concrete over here. So, um, this is looking pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and tape that up. Um, I'll go ahead and run my hand over pretty much everything here, make sure there's no rough spots, especially on the top parts here um, that are going to be super visible. And then I think we're set to be painting. Um, it's looking really good and I'm super excited. Uh, I went ahead and used some isopropyl alcohol just to kind of clean some of the initial stuff off. And you might be able to see it really took off a lot of paint um, on some of these areas where there was like kind of a thinner coat. Um, so if it was me, I would definitely, or if I were you, I would be careful about where you use isopropyl alcohol um, because you don't want it to completely remove your paint. Um, I use a very, well this was actually one I used kind of a lot. Um, it was on a rag of course, but I kind of used a wet spot of the rag. But if you want to just make your rag pretty damp, um, then it should be pretty good. I went over the rest of this, really didn't notice any other paint coming off. Um, but, you know, just be mindful of if you use isopropyl alcohol um, or another alcohol-based cleaner, um, you might run into this issue here. 
So, looking pretty good. Um, gonna tape that off and uh, hopefully we'll start painting. All right, guys, I went ahead and got a bunch of coats of color down and it has been drying for probably about an hour now. And oh my gosh, it looks really, really good. I'm super happy with how it's coming out. Um, I've currently got heaters. Um, this one, the radiated, kind of trying to get this half of the car. And then of course, this guy over here, just trying to keep this half of the car. It's nighttime right now. Um, and it's probably about 30 degrees outside. So I'm trying to keep the garage here as warm as possible. I think last time I checked, it was somewhere around 67, 68 degrees. Um, so it is warm enough. Um, but it is looking really, really good. Um, I used, let's see if I have, so they were, I believe these are eight ounce cans of the paint match duplicolor. Um, this was what I used to coat pretty much everything here. I used five of these um, and Granted, I already had some paint on it before. If you remember, um, I had painted it and then I you know, sanded it down. Um, so you're probably going to need a good amount of paint. Um, if I had to guess, probably 10 cans uh, would be a really conservative estimate. Um, if you wanted to get a good coat down, sand it like I did, um, and then do a full other coat. Um, of course, if you get to the uh, paint match color, uh, paint match paint from Automotive Touch Up, um, like I originally did. I think those are 12 or 14 ounce cans, so they're a lot larger, um, so you need less of them. But still, you know, in terms of paint, you know, $100 is really not that much. Um, so if you wanna buy 10 of those, I think you're probably gonna be around $150. Um, or the Automotive Touch Up paint, I think 10 cans would probably bring you like $120, and those are bigger cans. Um, so it's not too crazy to get, you know, just like 10 cans and make sure you have plenty of paint. Um, I really wish I had like one more can because there are a few spots. Um, let me come over here. Actually, there's a better spot over here. Um, this is just a, I don't know, like a drip or something right there, if you can see it. And um, I'm going to have to sand this down. I kind of just planned on tomorrow um, once this is kind of dried enough. I'm gonna go ahead and wet sand this all with a really nice high fine grit um, sandpaper just to really, really make it nice. Um, you really can't see any scratches or anything. This is the texture right here and it really is pretty good. Honestly, um, there's a few spots, like of course these little divots still have texture in them, um, but really it is looking super duper good. Um, there's a few spots it's hard to see. On the back of this core support right here, let's see if we can see it. Move this fan out of the way. Um, right here, if you guys can see that texture, um, I think there was a, like a grease or something there and it made the paint do a really weird thing. Um, I am pretty sure that I missed it when I was going with the tack cloth and the, just right, the wet rag. Um, I think I missed going on the back of this here. I didn't even think about it. And um, so there's a little bit of weird paint on the back. I'm gonna go ahead and wet sand that down tomorrow. And then I have half a can left um, in one of my cans. See if I can go ahead and touch that up really quick. But overall, you know, it came out really, really well. I'm super happy with it. Um, I wish I had a little bit more paint in some of these areas in the bucket. Um, it is just so hard to get a can in here. There's just not a lot of room. Uh, places like the corner right there. Um, just the bottom here is really hard to paint shoot to shoot straight down um, with a rattle can like this. If you had a paint gun, it would be a lot better. Um, this one's not too bad. Uh, there's a little bit missing, kind of like right there in the corner, and then right up on top of there. It's really hard to get on top of these little cutouts, um, just because you, there's like no way to really get right in there without being really close. Um, but, you know, overall, I really cannot complain. These are areas that you're really never going to see. Um, this is just something that I wanted to do to make it, to, you know, to make me feel better. Um, but all of the visible areas, you know, the top of this here, the top of the strut towers, you know, these kind of big fender wells right here, they all look absolutely amazing. And I'm super duper happy with how this came out. So tomorrow I'm going to go ahead and wet sand some of these areas down. I'm probably going to focus all my effort just on um, the tops here, um, again, because that's where it's most visible. I really don't want to take too much off because I don't have any paint left. And I, from, what I can, from what I can tell, I don't really see any available in my town at AutoZone or something. Um, or if they are, they're not near me. Um, so I could still get some, but it would be just kind of a pain. So I really would like to just 
wet sand a nice polish off the top and make it really, really smooth. Um, and then, you know, I've got, let me move these out of the way. I've got six cans here of this 1K clear coat. Here we go, 1K clear coat. This stuff, uh, it's a 11.3 ounce can. So I think I've got more than enough clear coat to go around. Um, this thing is going to shine like heck. It is gonna be super duper cool. Um, it's gonna be super glossy. We're gonna be able to go ahead and buff the clear as well. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put a couple of nice thick layers on there just to really protect the Inman Bay and let us really get a nice deep glossy shine out of it. It is gonna be really, really cool. I'm so looking forward to it, guys. Um, so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and leave this. I'm gonna try to keep um, these heaters in here tonight. Um, just to keep the temperature up while this is drying because I want it to dry as fast as possible so I can actually do some a little bit of wet sanding tomorrow. Um, I think wet sanding would be fine even if it wasn't fully dry because it doesn't gum up quite as easily as it would before. Um, like remember last week where I was having issues with it turning into tiny little balls when I was trying to sand everything. Uh, I don't think we're gonna have that issue um, just by wet sanding it, it's gonna really help lubricate everything. But I wanna go ahead and give it just the best fighting chance possible and uh, dry paint is better. So we're gonna go ahead and keep these heaters at least at some capacity on tonight and really try to um, dry this out as much as possible. And then tomorrow it is going to be clear and this is gonna look really, really good. So let's stick around for that and uh, see how it turns out. All right, guys, what well, is the next day? And this is after two coats of gloss, and it is looking really, really good. You can see everything is very shiny now. Um, it's, I don't really have a lot of lights in here, so it's not like super, you know, noticeable. Um, but in person, it's really good. And of course, on video, you can see a lot of lights shining up there. There's a few spots that, you know, I wish I could have touched up a little bit. Um, like right here, I noticed that I didn't get enough color coverage on it. Uh, right on the edge there, right there. And um, it just shows a little bit. And then on top of that shot tower, there's actually like two weird little bubbles um, from the paint underneath. I didn't notice it when I put the color on, um, but somehow there was a weird bubble on it. But overall, it came out really good. Um, I got, I think I used five cans. I used four and a half cans. I still have half a can of the clear of these big uh, 11 ounce whatevers. Um, and it covered everything. I used, I think, three cans on the base coat and then the other two and a half on the second pass, which is weird because I feel like I did more. I did heavier coats on the second, but you know, I don't know. So it, overall, it came out really good, guys. I'm super happy with it. Um, I think next week we're gonna go ahead and try to buff it, um, but I might actually just let this set up for a couple weeks since it's gonna be cold. I'm only gonna be able to leave it in this garage for another 24 hours, so it'll have a good day to cure up. Um, but it'll probably have to go back outside. So maybe next week we'll start on some engine stuff. I, have, I don't really haven't planned that yet. So it is looking really good, guys. As always, if you have any questions or comments, definitely post them down below. Um, I am super excited with how this is coming out. Um, I'm really glad that I went ahead and pulled everything back like this and just did this engine bay, because this is going to make me very happy in the years to come that I can say, hey, look, I did this nice engine bay and it is pearly white um, and it is, you know, just looks really, really nice. So hopefully this was as cool for you guys as it was for me. Um, I know I didn't really show many of the steps in it because I'm not a professional painter and I didn't want to like tell you guys something wrong, um, but I am pretty happy with how it came out. So I hope you guys have a great week this week and next week we're gonna jump into something more cool um, or hopefully, <laughs> hopefully we'll do some cool stuff and uh, I'll see you guys next time.